So if I give you a triangle, a right triangle with hypotenuse being 12 and one of the legs being five, can you find the other leg? Any answer? Oh, somebody, Ruby, 11. Did you round it up? Yeah, yeah. So Mason says screw the 119, that's right. And it's close to 11, yeah. So that's right. And Kathy, 119 seconds. <laughs> I'm kidding. So you mean 119 square root basically, right? It is 5, 12, 13, not 5, 11, 12. Oh, Mason is, is giving you the, the, the triple ones, Pythagorean triple, as we call it. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm going to talk about that anyway, Mason. So thanks for saying that. Uh, so let's get back to uh, the answer. Yes, it's 12 to the power of 2 equals 5 to the power of 2 plus b to the power of 2. This is 144 and 5 to the power of 2 is 25. I just move it to the other side to isolate for B. And that gives me 119. So B equals square root of 119, which is 10.9, basically. Um, awesome. So this is Pythagorean theorem. Very easy. Uh, not a big deal here with these questions. Uh, so that's why, I mean, what um, Ruby and Mason were talking about, um, it was called Pythagorean triples. Uh, so basically, because we have this theorem, we already know that, uh, for example, if you have a triangle, if you have a triangle with legs three and four, the hypotenuse will definitely be five always and not only that not only that you can also think of multiples of of these numbers for example three times two five times two four times two what do you get you get ten eight six so if two legs are six and eight hypotenuse will be ten so that's why we write it as three four five or this guy six eight 10. So these are called Pythagorean triples. Okay. Pythagorean triples. So that's a relationship between the sides. Okay. Uh, or you can make another one, for example, after, let's say, multiplying everything by, well, what about multiplying by, for example, four? Right? By four. So five times four. 20, four times four, 16, four times three, 12. You see, 12, 16, 20. This is another Pythagorean triple. So you can actually keep this doing um, and, and go to all the way to larger numbers. Like for example here, if one side is 3,636, the other side is 4,848, for example, this will be, the hypotenuse will be 6,060. Why? Because uh, the 3,636 is a multiple of three. 4,848 is the same multiple for four. So if you actually figure out what that multiple is and multiply that number by five, you get 6,060. So these are Pythagorean triples. So Pythagorean triples, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 9, 12, 15. What else? I have more. 5, 12, 13 that Mason was referring to. 7, 24, 25, 8, 15, 17. These are basically some common Pythagorean triples. You don't need to remember uh, and memorize them, basically. As long as you know three, four, five, I think it should be fine. Even, even if you don't remember, it's fine. You just you can just uh, apply the formula. 
a squared equals b squared plus c squared and solve for it. It's easy. It takes more time, but I mean, if a person knows already that this is a Pythagorean triple, they probably do it in a second or a few seconds. But the person who doesn't remember the number, it's totally fine. You, you still can apply, you know, a squared plus, equals b squared plus c squared and solve in the equation using calculator, okay? So here's an example, uh, which is easy, I believe. The legs of a right triangle are given. One of them is three over three uh, over 105. The other one is four over 105. So not only multiply, but also you can you can actually divide these numbers by something. These uh, these triples. So this question that the book brought up has divided three by 105. Four by 105. The question is, what is the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse? So obviously, the, <coughs> excuse me, the length of the hypotenuse would be five over 105. Same as the other ones, right? We just have to lower it down, like divide it by, divide both of them by five, numerator and denominator, which you get one over 21. And there we go, one over 21. You just lower it down, okay? So it's not only multiples, it could be also uh, division. They can be divided by something, which is totally fine, all right? Um, you, you can interrupt me, guys, anytime if you have a question, make sure to- What chapter drop. is this? Sorry? What chapter is this? 11. Oh. We're still on chapter 11, yeah. Uh, every time you forget about the chapter, if you look at these example numbers or exercise numbers, the first number, that's the chapter number. So the, 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 we're in chapter 11. Okay. Um, let's do exercise 11.9. I'll give you two minutes. Tell me what is the hypotenuse of a right triangle whose legs are given nine screw root of two and 12 screw root of two. Very easy. Knowing that we have these, you know, Pythagorean triples already given. Okay, Mason, 15 screw root of two. Let's see what others say. Okay. So yes, 15 screw root of two is the answer. So I'm sure you guys are gonna get it. Yeah, Albert says the same. Yeah, exactly. So it's gonna be 15 screw root of two. Uh, if you do Pythagorean theorem, like a squared equals b squared plus c squared, obviously, you can take one of these legs as B, the other one as C, and take A squared as your hypotenuse, right? Will be B squared plus C squared. And if you solve for A, you get 15 square root of two as, as your final answer. But you can also use Pythagorean triples if you have already memorized this guy here, nine, 12, 15, you see? Nine, 12, 15. So this is the nine, this is the 12. So the answer will be 15. This is how fast you, you actually can do it. So if you have nine square root of two, basically your, your triples are nine, 12, and 15, where two of them are multiplied by square root of two. So obviously the answer must be also uh, multiplied by square root of two. So that's how we can get the answer. All right, so let's move on to the next topic, which is congruent triangles. This one here. Congruent triangles are triangles that are exactly a copy paste of each other. So they're exactly the same, okay? So remember, congruent triangles means exactly the same. And when I say exactly the same, I mean um, same angles and same size. S 
same sides. So they have same sides and same angles. So they're exactly a copy of each other, right? So that's why I, I keep telling my students every time, if you don't want to forget, because there, there's another word also, uh, which is for triangles uh, that are kind of the same, but not, not perfectly the same. So in order not to make a mistake, congruent, you see the, these two letters, C-O, congruent, copy, same as copy. So as soon as you see congruent, C-O, remember the word copy, okay? So congruent triangles are copies of each other. So there we go. And if it's a copy, so it means it's, it's exactly the same. Same angles, same sides, all right? Okay, so what are the theorems and cases basically of congruency of, of, of being exactly the same in, in triangle? There is five, six, seven cases, which we're gonna um, quickly go over them because they're easy. Case one is side, 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 or triple S, simply, it means every one side is equal to another side, okay? So this side is equal to this one. That's the first side. This second side is equal to this one. That's the second side. And this third side equals to the third side. So if, if the triple sides are equal, all three sides of the triangle are equal one by one, we call those triangles congruent triangles. So the first case is all about sides. The other case is SAS, side, angle, side, okay? So one side is the same as the other side in the other triangle. Also the other side, the second side is the same as uh, the second side inside the other triangle, the second triangle. And more importantly now, the angle, is exactly the same as the other angle, okay? But here's, here's uh, the trick here and the point actually, very important. Especially when you write it as SAS, guys, it means this angle must be in between these two sides. So you cannot just go for any angle inside the triangle and say, uh, for example, what I meant is, if let's say this angle here was equal to this angle here. Is this SAS? No, no, because the angle must be in between these two sides, right? Two sides with the angle between them. So this is very important. You see, it's, it's in italic here in the book. Two sides and the angle between them. That's very important. The angle must be in between the two sides. So you cannot just grab it from anywhere inside the triangle and say, oh, this is, you know, this is, for example, um, 50 degrees here. And this guy here is also 50 degrees. And those two sides are equal. So the triangles are congruent. No, that you can't say that. Because this angle here is not between the sides. It has to be between the sides, okay? So that's very important, which is given as a warning by the textbook, as you can see. You see this angle, um, this angle, these two sides, the angle must be in between the sides, meaning this one and this one, okay? So if these two sides are the same, the angles between them must be the same, which in this case is not. However, these two angles are, are equal. These two angles are equal. So is this, is this a SAS case? No, it's not, because the angles that are equal are not between the sides. It has to be between the sides. So we care about these two angles that are, that are not equal. And since if they're not equal, this is not a SAS case. So these two triangles are not congruent. And by the way, if you want to show two triangles being congruent, uh, this is how you do it. If this is ABC 
and this is D E F. This is how you write it: triangle A B C. If you want to show congruency, guys, you have to use this symbol. Equal sign with this symbol on the top. It's congruent to triangle D E F. And remember, whichever side or vert uh, or angle you started with, you have to do the same with the other triangle. Meaning, it has to be the same order. Meaning, for this one, I cannot say triangle, for example, D F E. I can't do that. It has to be the same order. So when you say A B C on this side, it has to be D E F. Okay, so you have to follow the same direction with the corresponding angle. So, so that angle A, so that angle A corresponds with angle D, angle B corresponds with angle E, and angle C corresponds with angle F. So they have to be in the same location when you actually put it down, um, you know, in writing. And once again. This is the symbol for congruency. It's an equal sign with that symbol on the top. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the third case is called uh, ASA. Um, obviously, it means angle, side, angle. And remember again, the side must be between angles. So it cannot be any, any sides. So if these two angles are the same, this angle is the same as that one. And the second angle is the same as this one. Okay. But then the side must be in between the angles. So it means this side equals to this side. And the side is both sides are between the angles. Okay. So that's why there is another warning here that if you have two sides, for example, being equal, one of them is between two angles. All right, that's that's a check mark. But the other one is not between two angles, it's between one of them. The other one is on the other side. So it's not here. It must be here. If it's not here, then no, these two triangles, they're not congruent. So be careful. So it's not anywhere in the triangle. As, as soon as you find two equal angles, you can actually call it a case for congruency, okay? So it has to be a side, again, between two angles. The other case is angle, angle, side. And when you say angle, angle, side, it has to be the same order, angle, angle, side. It means, so you see angle, angle, and then immediately side. Okay, angle, angle, side. With, with this one, again, I call it A1, A2, S. So A1, because it has to be exactly the same as the other one, A2, and then it has to be S. All right? So that's important, guys, in case that A1, A2, S, S comes after A2. If in the other one it's A2, A1, S, Okay, this is not congruency. They're not congruent triangles. Meaning, for example, for this second triangle, let's say your S is here. That is the same. All right, so it's like A2, A1, S, which it, that's actually not the same as A1, A2, S. That's what I said here. So they're not, they're not equal. They're not congruent. So be careful, you have to keep the order, all right? The rest, uh, uh, the, the, ne the next three cases, they're actually easy because they're for right triangles. And for right triangles, we have a case hypotenuse leg called HL, which means obviously hypotenuse are the same with, with one of the legs. If the hypotenuse and, and one of the legs are equal, those two triangles, those two right triangles will definitely be congruent, which means the third one would be obviously the same. <clears throat> and so there's no way you have two equal sides 
which one of them is hypotenuse, and the other one is two bases or two heights. And the last side is not going to be equal. That's not possible. It's out of your basically control. If one hypotenuse and one of the legs are equal, then the third one would be definitely equal. And therefore, the two triangles are congruent. The other case is double legs, LL, double legs. So with the double legs, it means both legs are equal. This leg with this leg and the other leg with the other leg. If that happens, again, it's, it's the way of saying that hypotenuses are the same because there's no way that the two legs are equal and the hypotenuse is not, that's not possible. So I would put three marks here and then three marks here. Eventually this will be true. And finally, um, a side angle. Uh, and again, the angle must come with the side inside the right triangle. So you have a side and its corresponding angle that is attached to it, right? So if it's a leg, it should be the leg with, with the angle. If it's hypotenuse with the angle, it has to be hypotenuse with the angle. Um, is it, isn't leg-leg just basically SAS? Uh, it is. It is SAS because the, the middle angle is 90 degree. You're right. Also, side angle is basically just uh, ASI because of right Exactly, angle. exactly. It's also ASA because this is A, the angle, this is the side, and this is A, the right angle. So if you go that way, it's ASA, exactly. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mason. I can actually add that here. This is part of ASA, same as that one. This is also side angle side. Yeah. But yeah, you can actually call it that or double legs. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, so that's a uh, different types of congruency that we have. Um, now there's a question here. It says, what is the angle? If these two triangles, ABC, so ABC, this one on this side, and B, A, D. So these two, one of them is on this side, the other one is on the other side, B, A, D. So the question says these two triangles are congruent, so it means they're the same. What's the angle for D? There are different ways you can actually do this. But if these two triangles are congruent, so if this is 60, I would say this will be also 60. Simple. Okay. And if you look at triangle ABC, when you have one angle 70, the other 60, you can add them up. It's 130 and then subtract from 180, you just get 50. So this guy will be 50, right? And because they're congruent, so if C is 50, D also will be 50. That's, that's my way of saying it. But there's also other ways, you know, to go around it because this is a like a trapezoid, you know, the angles inside the trapezoid is 360, and then you can go from there as well. So uh, anyway, and we also know inside the trapezoid, uh, I don't know if you know or not, but these two sides, they, they should add up to 180. Same as the other two sides. Okay. I said trapezoid, sorry. Parallelogram. What am I talking about? Inside a parallelogram, these two angles, they add up to 180, same as these two. 180, 180. And if you add them up, you get 360. So you can also use that, which I think uh, we have it in the next chapter, maybe. But if you already know, you can apply it. So 70 plus 60 is 130. And as I said, if you want to add up to 180, you need 50. So it's, it's the same with the other side as well. Okay, so that 